All right, guys, I hope you can hear me. I got this kind of laid up on a candle on a table in my uh, living room. So um, we went out for our first test and tune, and we had probably one of the worst days to track uh, in probably well over a decade for various uh, reasons. Um First, uh, the traction just wasn't there. Um, uh, just, I think my slicks are just done. I mean, they still got rubber on them, but they're, I think the sidewalls have been beaten out of them and, uh, they're, um, uh, they're kind of just cupping in and I'm not getting a full, uh, footprint. Uh, and in one of the pictures you can actually kind of see that happening, um, you know, we started the day off with about 15 pounds of air pressure in the slicks, which usually would work. And uh, we've ran uh, the bias fly slicks at uh, that particular track on pretty cold nights, and it, it always hooked. Now, granted, it was at like the end of the season where there's a lot of rubber and bite, and there was a lot of street cars there, and street cars tend to peel the rubber off if they spin. So, um, yeah, it, that didn't help anything. Um, uh, we were working on the tune as well. That morning was fairly cold. I think when I unloaded the car, it was like 38 degrees and even just kind of, uh, uh driving it uh, around the pits, uh, I was getting some some significant lean popping out of it unless I was really, really into it. So uh, I kind of figured we'll get some heat into the engine and we'll make one pass and see what happens. And the only video my wife got of the car going down the track, you're going to hear it popping in the burnout box. Now, it wasn't popping like down track, but uh, it was popping in the burnout box. And then after that, I made one more run after we got everything fully heated up and it didn't do it as bad, but I still, uh, I jetted up, I went four jet sizes and I ended up uh, opening up the headers and it subsided for the most part. Um, and it would get a pop here or there. Uh, but now bear with me. What I'm going to say may explain why we quite possibly had some of that popping. So, uh, you know, we made a bunch of passes. We made at least like seven passes within an hour. There wasn't a lot of cars there. We were on a mission. Uh, the car was, the temperature never went over 150 on the car. The car was just, it was on point. Oil pressure was great. Everything was good. Um, and uh, I took, for the last pass, I took the limiters off. Now, we did manage to make like a semi-clean run that kind of mimicked what we had in the fall. Uh, and that would have been an 1172 with a 162 60 foot at a, almost 114 miles an hour. Uh, that's the best 60 foot the car has done. Uh, but we were spinning, which explains the ET. So I think had we not spun and... Uh, the car six had a good sixty, a better sixty foot with it hooking. I think that would have been a really, really good pass. But the fact that it spun, and I mean the the track was like glass for me going down the track. The back end of the car was just swaying. I I was I was in it, but I was definitely steering the car. I was, uh, you know, things could have ended up a lot worse uh, as I get further into the story. So, uh, on the last pass, I took the limiters off. I do my burnout. It had one light lean pop, uh, but not 
nothing major. Uh, I go up, I stage the car, I launched it. It felt like it didn't spin. It felt good. And then I go to grab second gear and like all hell broke loose. Like just engine lost power, shit was banging and popping and it, it, it sounded like I threw a rod. It was, it was, it was pretty loud. Uh, it was probably one of the loudest car. It ultimately was just one massive carburetor backfire. And I do have to take the carburetor back off. Just make sure we didn't bend the throttle plates or anything like that. But uh, uh, essentially what it was was one big carburetor backfire. Uh, now, in the meantime, my wife was on the sidelines uh, trying to get a video. And... Uh, they have these, like, I call them podium blocks. They're not barricades. They're outside of the barricaded area. She was trying to stand on there, and when she was up there, she lost her footing and fell and actually uh, got seriously hurt. Uh, she uh, broke her leg. I guess you'd call it her leg. There's uh, five or six fractures, and she's actually uh, getting surgery on Wednesday. Uh, now, this happened before I probably launched. I have no idea what's going on at this point. I'm going down track, car fucking brakes. I'm asking her, hey, fucking blew it up. In my mind, it's like, this thing's fucking dead. Uh, blew it up, and then she texts me back, I'm hurt pretty bad. And I'm like, what? So... Uh, I, where my car, I managed to make it onto the return road and where the ambulance was, was literally right next to my car. And one of the nurses or medics that was on site there that worked at the track, uh, brought her down there. So we kind of, you know, I, I actually walked, uh, up to where my wife was and then I got a ride back and then I ended up uh, getting uh, my uh, well they came down picked me up I had it because it's it's like a half a mile walk between where my car was at the end of the track and where I was pitted uh, so I they gave me a ride to grab my uh, suburban back you know go down there with the trailer and luckily I installed the the winch um and we were able to load it up and then the medics and the people there we loaded my wife up into the back of the suburban and i ended up leaving the trailer and the car at a friend's place nearby got my wife to the hospital as i told you now she needs surgery on wednesday uh this morning uh as i've had some time off uh I woke up early. I wanted to put a car cover on the car because it's just sitting outside on the trailer. Uh, I talked with a friend last night and we kind of agreed that if I had thrown a rod or bent the valve or you know dropped the valve or whatever, I would be hearing all kinds of crazy shit going on. And that that's not the case. Uh, even if you threw a rod, the car would have still wanted to pop. Uh, so I got the car cover, uh, I grabbed a couple of specific tools to help me, uh, do a couple things. Uh, I grabbed my spare distributor. First thing I did was check for spark. We had spark, but it was backfiring out of the car, like if it was 180 off. And one of the theories was that the pin in the distributor gear sheared off. So I popped the distributor cap off, and lo and behold, it's just spinning. It's it's doing nothing. So yeah, uh, I swapped the distributor base, put it all back together. Car fires right up, and oil pressure is good. Everything is good, but I am gonna have to go back and uh, oil change. I don't know where that roll pin is. Hopefully, if it, it, the drain plug magnet picks it up, 
at the, at this point the the pickup isn't going to pick up a roll pin. Uh, I honestly think it it ground it, it itself somehow because the uh, the opening in the shaft is actually wallered out and like worn out. Like it it the roll pin came out. It had to have and it, that could have been throwing our timing off as well if the the shaft and the distributor gear weren't you know they were just fucking moving around uh that could have been another reason for a top end pop because when that roll pin let go it was on on the big you know on the higher rpm um so but it was uh, the plugs were still reading lean after various passes so we were we were working our way towards something that was on the richer side but not too lean and just didn't get to do it but um swap the base and uh car fired up it runs everything's good so uh you know take this with a grain of salt no matter how much planning you guys do uh just always kind of be prepared for the worst uh, this is probably, like I said, one of the worst track days I've had in a very, very long time. And everything almost happened simultaneously. And it could have been a lot worse. And it's been a lot worse for a lot of other people. So this is minute compared to other situations. But uh, I'm going to just put up some pictures and the, whatever little videos and stuff we got onto this. So thanks for watching. At this point, this video is like 11 minutes long. Uh, if I've lost you, then I... I lost you. Whatever. Uh, so uh, share, like, subscribe. Follow me on Instagram. It's Copper Cutlass. And I'll let you guys go. And the winner is... What do you guys think the winner is, huh? Fuck N.A.